So if you find yourself in a position where you're trying by all means to do certain things, you buy gifts, you, you cook, you, you do all types of things just to be connected. I want you to understand that as long as that person has got a soul tie with someone else, you're doing those things in vain. Yeah, Rachel was giving birth to sons for her husband, but the husband still did not love her. She then says after she bore her third son and said, this time will my husband be joined unto me because I born him three sons. You know, but that, but the husband never loved. Praise the name of the Lord. So I want you to understand that if there's a soul tie that you have with someone else, even if good things are done in the marriage, you never appreciate. Hallelujah. I don't know if you have come across such a situation that maybe it could be your husband's birthday. You buy him a cake. You buy him a shirt. But he still does not appreciate He's got a soul tie with someone else. Clap for the Lord for that. Amen. Next verse. And she conceived again. So four sons and bear a son. And she said, now will I praise the Lord. Therefore, she called his name Judah and she lived bearing. So now she understood that this thing is not working. I have tried to give this man four sons but he still loves another woman. There is a soul tie. Praise the name of the Lord. And I want you to understand that if you've got an ungodly spouse, you can pray and break those soul ties. So they don't always need to be thinking about that other ex of theirs or connected to another ex. Leah tried all things, but the life of Jacob or his soul was tied to Rachel. Praise the name of the Lord. So this is idolatry in an ungodly soul tie. Even when she got children, she just saw them as things to use to please her husband. She wanted Jacob to love her at all costs, which is also another example of an ungodly soul tie. Praise the name of the Lord. So I want you to understand that soul tie, you can carry your soul tie from being a teenager up until you enter marriage. Hallelujah. And there will still be affecting you till the day you die. So they need to be dealt with. Praise the name of the Lord. How does ungodly soul ties affect us in marriage? Praise the name of the Lord. Very few people marry their first love. Many of us have fallen in and out of love before we eventually got married to another person. We promised to marry, then we did not. In some cases, there was blood covenants that were formed. Or in some cases, divorce took place immediately after marriage. All these people still affect our lives, though we are no longer in the relationship. How? Sometimes involuntary thoughts, you don't want to think of them, yet you do. So sometimes you don't want to think about the relationships that you had in the past, the partners that you had in the past, but sometimes those thoughts keep coming back. That is a sign of an ungodly soul tie that's still lingering. Erotic dreams or sex in the dream, even though that person might have died a long time ago, is also a sign that there's still a negative soul tie. When you see all that is in an, that is, when you see all that it is an indication of an ungodly soul tie, why the connection was not broken. Sometimes it is just a crush or a fantasy that you are dealing with. If in marriage you had a quarrel and begin to think, I wish I had married that other person, then you know that there's a soul tie. Praise the name of the Lord. When you argue with your spouse, and then you think, ah, it would have been better if I was married with that person. I want you to know that that is a negative soul tie. It might look like a, negative, like a simple thought, but spiritually, there are deep things that are taking place. Hallelujah. So that connection needs to be broken. You need to break that soul tie because it will definitely affect how you relate with your current spouse. A lady went to tell the pastor about the problems she was having in a marriage. Then the pastor said, okay, you go and fast and I'll go and fast as well. The pastor now had a dream and found the lady wearing 10 wedding rings on her 10 fingers. 
And God showed him nothing else but besides that. He called the lady and asked her if the number 10 and the rings made sense. And then she said she had been, she had had 10 boyfriends and her husband was number 10. Praise the name of the Lord. She was having an unconscious soul tie with 10 men. Hallelujah. So I want you to understand that a soul tie can also be established in non-sexual relationships. Hallelujah. So you can just say he's my boyfriend. We just talk on the phone and text. But there's a soul tie that gets established. And it will affect your marriage in the, in the future. Genesis chapter 2, verse 24. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall become one. So I want you to know that there is a call for individuals to leave things that they've got soul ties with. Praise the name of the Lord. You know, in some marriages, some husbands cannot do anything without consulting the mother. So if you and the wife want to sit down and plan maybe to buy a house, the husband needs to say, I need to call my mother and ask my mother whether a greenhouse is an ideal house or a four-bedroomed house or a two-bedroomed house before we make this arrangement. Praise the name of the Lord. If you're a husband and you need to consult your mother to do certain things, that there's a soul tie to your mother and it needs to be broken. Praise the name of the Lord because the scripture says, therefore shall a man leave his mother and his father and shall cleave unto his wife, which means that the minute you marry someone and she becomes your wife, you are automatically becoming one flesh. Clap for the Lord for that. Amen. So if you're a man and you are a married man and you say you need to consult someone that's not your wife, I want you to know there's a soul tie. Your wife and you have become one, which means whatever you're thinking of is the same thing that your wife is thinking of. The minute you just agree, it's good to go. Hallelujah. So this one is going to husbands. Whenever you consult your family about a specific issue, then you know that there's a soul tie and it needs to be broken. The one flesh relationship that the scripture is talking about is reserved for marriage it is not safe otherwise. So do not have one flesh with your parents, with your mother or your father, but only become one flesh with your wife, as the word of the Lord is saying. Paul tells us that if you sleep with a prostitute, you are one with her. Now, if the Bible tells us that you can form oneness with a prostitute whose name you don't even know, what are you trying to establish? 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 16. What know ye not that he which is joined to an harlot is one body? So you don't even know the name of that prostitute. And all the men she has slept with, and whatever spirit those men had, they get collected and they get transferred into your life. Praise the name of the Lord. And as I told you, all sexual sins, they destroy your soul. Hallelujah. So if you really care about going into heaven, I want you to understand that your soul is important. And right now, the devil is raging like a lion. So he can win as many souls as possible. So when you sleep with the prostitutes, whatever spirits that were in those men that she slept with also come into you. Hallelujah. So don't become one with the prostitute. And when you become one, there will be an ungodly soul tie. Any, any time there is fornication or adultery, you are forging into an ungodly soul tie with that person. And that soul tie will one day affect your marriage unless it is broken. So when two people are standing at the altar to get married, you find three invisible other men on the side of the sister. So the sister is there, but there are other men standing there. The man is standing there. There are the spiritual women standing there. So when the two of you physically say, I do, you're also saying, I do to those invisible ones. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. 
So I want you to understand that it is very, very important for you to understand that even if one day as a young sister or a young brother you want to get married, make sure you break any ungodly soul ties because they'll also come in the marriage. That's why you find out in some marriages there's always some funny behavior because the spiritual person that you can't see has taken effect. Hallelujah. Don't, you don't even understand why the wife is shouting at you. Out of nowhere, she starts shouting. There's a spiritual husband that says, I'm tired of this guy. Hallelujah. So I want you to know that if you come to the altar and you haven't broken those soul ties, you're also saying, I do, to those invisible partners. Praise the name of the Lord. So after all the ceremony now comes the reality. In your mind, in marriage, you begin to think of invisible person number one, number three tomorrow, the next day number five. You know, because they'll be there. They were also included in the marriage ceremony. So two is a company, three is a crowd. How about 12 invisible spouses? There'll be disaster in that marriage. When we break the soul ties, you ask the Lord to bring back every part of your soul that you gave away to many other people. So anything that was taken out of you may it come back. And I want you to understand that when you're breaking soul ties, you don't have to consult the other person. You can do it by yourself. Praise the name of the Lord. So I want you to picture a boat that is tied maybe to a harbor, right? You've got one person on the harbor and one person in the boat. So the person on the harbor can pull the, the rope off the harbor and the boat will go. Or the person in the boat can go and pull the rope off the harbor and the boat will still go. I want you to understand that in a position where you've had a soul tie with someone, you don't have to consult them to break the soul tie. You can break free of that soul tie by yourself. Praise the name of the Lord. So you can fully give your whole soul to your partner. Many marriages suffer today because someone from their past gets into their marriage. Hallelujah. After being married for nine years, you see a friend request on Facebook. Now this social media, I'm telling you, has done a lot of things. And I don't know why, especially Facebook. Hallelujah. I, um, a survey was actually done in America where they actually said that 50, I think about 50% of all divorces in America were coming from communications that were found on Facebook. Because you could have left the country and you, you're in Australia. But you know, Facebook always gives you these things like suggestion, suggestion of friends. They're like, ah, but I know this person from... And then you click on add. Ah, that's the end. Praise the name of the Lord. So I want you to understand that you should be very, very careful, especially on social media, especially the young ones. Please be very, very careful. And nowadays with the rise of satanic worship and Illuminati and all those things, now they are sending you messages on WhatsApp. Hi, my friend, how are you? The minute you respond, you establish a soul tie. And now the person is asking you to send money or to sacrifice or cut yourself and, and do blood things and so forth. You know, this generation has now, becoming, has now become extremely dangerous. If you are not careful, you establish a soul tie with someone that you've never met. And at the end of the day, you find yourself being tied up to the things of the kingdom of darkness. Praise his holy name. I want us to look at uh, 1 Samuel chapter 25, verse 44. I want you to see the soul tie that David had with Michal. The word says, but Saul had given Michal, his daughter, David's wife, to Falita, the son of Laish, which was of Galatim. So in this particular passage, there was a time when David defeats Goliath. 
and Goliath dies. And Saul had promised and said, whoever shall defeat this uncircumcised Philistine shall be given the daughter of Saul. So David killed Goliath and got Michal, his daughter. But because David kept on running away from Saul, Saul took Michal, his daughter, and gave it to that particular man. Hallelujah. So I want us to go to 2 Samuel. We fast forward to 2 Samuel chapter 3. From verses 1 to 16. First, Second Samuel chapter 3, from verses 1 to 16. So after David's wife had, had now been taken away and given to his friend, and now he had six wives, he says, Now there was a long war between the house of Saul and the house of David. But David waxed stronger and stronger, and the house of Saul waxed weaker and weaker. And unto David were sons born in Hebron, and his first born was Amnon of Ahinom, the Jezreelitess. And his second, Chila of Abigail, the wife of Nabal, the Canaanite, the Camelite. And the third, Absalom, the son of Maka, the son of Talmai, king of Geshu. And the fourth, Adonijah, the son of Haggith. And the fifth, Shehapiath, the son of Abital. And the sixth, Ethereum, by uh, Igla, David's wife. These were born to David in Hebron. And it came to pass while there was war between the house of Saul and the house of David, that Abner made himself strong for the house of Saul. And Saul had a concubine whose name was Rispa, the daughter of Aya. And uh, Ishbometh said to Abner, Wherefore hast thou gone in unto my father's concubine? There, then was Abner very wroth for the words of Ishbometh and said, Am I a dog's head which against Judah do show kindness this day unto the house? Of Saul, thy father, to his brethren and to his friends, and have not delivered thee into the hand of David, that thou chargest me today with the faults concerning this woman. So, so do God to Abner, and more also, except as the Lord had sworn to David, even so do I to him. To translate the kingdom from the house of Saul. And to set up the throne of David over Israel and over Judah from Dan even to Bathsheba. And he could not answer Abner a word because he feared him. And Abner sent messages to David on his behalf saying, Whose is this land? Saying also, Make thy league with me, and behold, my land shall be with thee, so bring about all Israel unto thee. And he said, well, I will make a league with thee, but one thing I require of thee, that is thou shalt not see my face, except thou first bring Michal, Saul's daughter, when thou comest to see my face. And David said messages to Ishbopheth, uh, Saul's son, saying, deliver me my wife Michal, which I espoused to me for an hundred foreskins of the Philistines. And Ishbopheth sent and took her from her husband, even from uh, Faltiel, the son of Laish. And her husband went with her along weeping behind to Bahurim. Then said Abner unto him, go return. And he returned. Praise the name of the Lord. You see, I want you to understand that in this scripture, David was married to six wives. But because he had a negative sort of with Michal, Michal was already given to another man. But he said, I want my wife back. Hallelujah. And he says, I will not talk to you, Abner, up until you bring my wife back. Praise the name of the Lord. This is an example of a negative soul tie. You've been married with six wives, but you still want your original wife back. The one that was already taken away. So I want you to understand, and I want you to see... What was despicable about this script? The husband, you see, is following a wife, crying behind her. Up until she's given to David, and then he's told to go back home. 
You know, now the husband that's going back home also has a negative soul tie to Michal. David also had another negative soul tie to Michal. And both their marriages are not working. If you remember in the word of God, even David got to an extent where he then killed the wife. He killed a man called Uriah to get his wife. Hallelujah. Negative soul ties will always allow us to do these unusual and mysterious things. So David had six wives, many children, and you would think six wives would keep him busy. And also as a king, he should have been very busy with the things of national importance because he was a king. But what did he say to Abner? If you want me to talk to you, bring back my wife. But she was already married to someone else. Hallelujah. So you find out that there are some men, even up until today, that once you get married, they nag you. Hallelujah. It's because of that negative soul tie, and it needs to be broken. David was married, and Michal was also married. So Satan is still using soul ties to break homes today, even among Christians. So as long as that soul tie is not broken, I want you to know that your house or your marriage will not stand up until that soul tie has been broken. Okay, it is also possible for a husband and a wife to have ungodly soul ties. If they have sex before marriage, the ungodly soul tie must be broken. So if you know, before you got married, you had sexual intercourse with other people, you need to break those soul ties. Even though you're married now, you need to denounce them and break them so that they don't affect your relationship. How many soul ties can you break? As many illicit relationships as you have had in the past. Even if there was no sex involved with one person, but sometimes you'd realize that because you've been in a relationship with someone, those soul ties need to be broken. One person had two rings from a previous relationship 20 years ago, and now in her 40s could not be married. She took a hammer and destroyed the two rings. The next day, the man of 20 years ago called her, and she said, you are married. Praise the name of the Lord. Clap for the Lord for that. Amen. So I want you to know that there are certain possessions that when we keep them in our lives, they establish negative soul ties that don our lives to progress forward. Don't keep gifts from former boyfriends and girlfriends. Destroy them and be free. If people, friends, or relatives manipulate you through fear, anger, or withdrawal, insecurity, self-condemnation, or one-sided relationship, it is ungodly. Only God must control you and not any man. Your worth cannot come from the way people treat you or talk to you. Any relationship that does not build you up, you don't need it. Walk away from it. Any relationship that abuses you verbally, physically, emotionally is ungodly. So you need to break those relationships. I know there's a culture where, especially uh, in the African context for black Africans, where most women stay in, in abusive marriages for the sake of not being uh, blacklisted in society. You know, so some, some women get physically abused, emotionally abused, you know, and remain in that marriage for the sake of their children or for the sake of not being told by society that you were rejected by your husband. That soul tie needs to be broken. You can form ungodly soul ties with teachers or with doctors. Maybe you still dream getting tormented by teachers who irritated you. Do not allow a teacher to oppress your child because they cannot relate with their bosses later on in life. So whenever you notice that your child is complaining, that my teacher shouts at me, my teacher beats me. You know, as a child, don't just say to the child, you are naughty or, or don't do anything. Make sure you uh, tackle that particular mat because it will affect the child as they grow up. They will establish a negative soul tie. You know, like even for some of you, you still remember your teacher, certain teachers in primary school because of the way you were treated. That's a soul tie. 
So if your child comes to you and complains about a specific teacher, make sure you address that issue so that it doesn't affect them when they grow up. We must be free at all costs in Jesus' name. We must respect our boss. Actually, if you don't respect your boss, then you're not following what the word of the Lord says, which says, honor those that, are not, that have got authority over you. But don't idolize them. Child molestation is a problem in Africa because we live with all kinds of relatives, house girls, house boys, all can molest our children. And this opens up the door for demons to torment them through ungodly soul ties. So I want you to, to know that you are the guardians of your children. Hallelujah. Speak to your children. Tell them that when anyone touches you appropriately, come and tell me. You know, if you become a lion of a parent, the child, when they come across these situations, will not come and tell you because they know you are going to explode. When you've got children, tell them nicely. Treat them nicely. So that, you, so that these children will not have an ungodly soul tied to them. Not every maid that you have in your house is godly. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. So I want you to know that when you talk to your children and you tell them that whoever touches you inappropriately, come and tell me. When the children come, you can actually stop a negative soul tie from being established to your children. Hallelujah. Demons are transferred into the child's. Sexual impurity, lesbianism, homosexual spirits are also transferred. So I want you to know that the devil have a legal right to do things to your children when certain things happen to them. Praise the name of the Lord. So even as we are going to pray today, you pray and you denounce any type of negative soul tie upon your children. Bitterness, anger, insecurity, fear of the dark comes through being molested early in life. The cross of Calvary is the answer. Molested people also become molesters themselves. If a child is too sexually aware early in life, you must help them quickly as parents. We have full authority over our children and can deliver them. Also with our parents, we may have ungodly soul ties. So it's also important as well as we read in the book of Genesis chapter 2, that the man needs to leave the father and the mother. Some of these negative soul ties are established with parents. So you find out in some relationships, the man will not marry the woman as long as the mother is not happy. If your mother is not happy with your fiancé, you don't marry her. Soul tie. So be careful. Some are abused verbally, psychologically or physically by parents, calling them ugly or stupid or useless. There is power in your tongue. Hallelujah. So when it comes to your children, do not give them these ungodly names, that you are stupid, you are clever, you are, you are, you know, you are useless, and that affects the child. Those words create a soul tie to the child. And when the child grows up, there is no confidence there is no uh, self-determination. And most of the children end up getting involved in suicide. You know, there's a time when uh, I asked myself, I said, how does an 11-year-old know how to commit suicide? So some of the words that you speak to the child, they create a portal to allow the devil to bring thoughts into the child. Hallelujah. So as long as you are speaking negative words to the children, the devil puts things into the child. Hallelujah. So be careful, parents, about words that you speak to your children. They establish negative soul ties. Some are hated by their parents because of the way they were conceived. Some were abandoned by their parents. So when we marry, we must break ungodly soul ties with our parents. African men... Hear God's word and cleave to your wives. I thought I was going to get an amen for the women, but the women are just quiet. So I think African men, you can continue to cleave to your mothers because the ladies are quiet. <laughs> okay, can I get an amen from the ladies? Hallelujah. 
And married women know what I'm talking about. It is a problem for men to leave their, especially their mothers. I don't know why it is a problem. Please know where the battles are. Not with people we can see, but with invisible entities. You need to break ungodly soul ties with that father or mother who died several years ago. So even if your mother or father has passed away, break those uh, soul ties. Some of you cannot sleep during the night because you're thinking of your mother, thinking of your father, but they died a long time ago. And some of them even died in the Lord, which should give you peace that they are with your father uh, in heaven. Hallelujah. So I want you to know that when you're still thinking of your dead parent, that is an ungodly soul tie. God is your father. Clap for the Lord. Amen. And he's alive. The need to belong and to be loved is so strong that even when we grow up, we are still looking for our parents' love or approval. You know, you go to your father or mother and you say, how do you see my fiancé? You know, we always seek that approval. Amen. I know women don't have that problem. It's only men. Hallelujah. So if you're a young man and the Lord has spoken to you to get a certain sister, I want you to understand that all you need is God's approval and not man. You have deep wounds and you are going to keep wounding others as you keep looking for this parental love. So I want you to understand that the more you keep thinking about that relationship that you had with your parents, it affects the other people around you. It affects your marriage and also affects your children and also affects your friends. You must break that ungodly soul tie and accept the love of Jesus so you can be free. So as long as that soul tie is not broken, you will always be under the bondage of that particular entity or that individual. You can form soul ties with your doctor because you trust them and bear your heart to them. If your doctor is negative and speaks negative words, they will happen. If you believe all they say to you because you trust them and they are people of authority, you must never accept those predictions from your doctor and you must break all negative soul ties with them. Because some of the times the doctors can tell you that, no, you've only got two months to live. And because you accept what the doctors tell you, it eventually happens. Hallelujah. This is why Isaiah says in the book of Isaiah chapter 53 verse 1, that who is going to believe the report of the Lord? What is God saying about your life? So we establish this soul ties with doctors. And the doctor, because he said this about you, you believe it. And it allows demons to activate the word of the doctor. So break that negative soul tie with your doctors. So soul ties are not always evil. Some of them are good. Because when you establish a soul tie with someone, like the one that was between David and Jonathan, you are able to see in your spirit that your brother in church or your sister in church has got a need. And then you begin to pray for them and the Lord delivers them. Where soul ties support God's word, people will get better and better because they love God's word. So the more we begin to listen to the word of God, the more we begin to pray, the more we establish brotherly love amongst each other and the love of God between ourselves and the Lord, then negative soul ties will be broken. So how to break ungodly soul ties? We can only break ungodly soul ties by the power that is in the blood of Jesus. You must be born again and you must give your life to the Lord Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. I want you to understand that the way soul ties operate is you can break them now, today. But if you re-establish communication or or you reconnect to certain things that were part of that relationship. You rebuild that soul tie. Praise the name of the Lord. So I want you to know that the devil 
will constantly be coming into your life to try and re-establish negative soul ties because he is one that is seeking after souls. Hallelujah. You know, when the Lord Jesus Christ says, that shall a man lose his soul for the whole world. You know, he was comparing the whole world with everything that's in the world with the soul. And the Lord was saying that the world is nothing compared to your soul. So I want you to know that the devil is after your soul. So you might break your soul tie today, but I want you to know that if you do certain things later on in life, the soul tie will be re-established and the devil will have, uh, you will have enough rights to actually send his demons into your life because you've opened up that portal again. Praise the name of the Lord. So I want us to rise up on our feet as we clap for the Lord. Amen. Praise His holy name. Hallelujah. So in conclusion, I just want us to open up Psalm chapter 51. Psalm chapter 51. And let's read it together. We can start uh, where it actually says, um, have mercy upon me. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against thee, thee only, have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified. No, we haven't finished reading. That thou must be justified when thou speakest, and be clear when thou judgest. Behold, I was sharpened in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts. And in the hidden part, thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Then will I teach transgressors thy ways, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. Deliver me from blood guiltness, O God, thou God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousness. O Lord, open thou my lips, and my mouth shall show forth thy praise. For thou desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offering. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, thou wilt not despise. Do good in thy good pleasure unto Zion. Build thou the walls of Jerusalem. Then shalt thou be pleased with the sacrifices of righteousness, with burnt offering and whole burnt offering. Then shall they offer bullocks upon thine altar. Praise his holy name. I just want us to go to verse number 11. You see, the word of the Lord says, cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. I want you to know that when we decide not to break these negative soul ties or go against the word of God and keep those soul ties connected to us, I want you to know that the spirit of grace will leave us. Hallelujah. And the Lord will take his Holy Spirit away from us. Praise his holy name. Cast me not away from thy presence, Lord. 
I want you to put your right hand on your heart and I want you to raise your left hand to the Lord and I want you to repeat these words after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I acknowledge that I'm a sinner and I, I acknowledge that you died and you rose again and you sit at the right hand of the Father. I pray that you may enter into my soul and break every negative soul tie that has been established upon my life, upon my soul, upon the lives of my children, and upon the souls.